Hello and welcome to the show. We start this week's Ferris episode with Mr. Payne on GTA 5 racing. What he thought was a no contact race. It started out like that. However, the game got bored of these arbitrary rules and decided to make it a full contact race in the middle of a corner. Yes, no one quite realised this was going to happen. And of course, everyone's driving towards cars thinking they can go through them. It's a bit of a... it doesn't quite work. It is going to be a non-contact race. Consistency is kind of important. Uh, Stinty Boy up next with what's definitely been a lot of contact. It's definitely been a lot of contact. In fact, this might be the most broken car I have ever seen in an unmodded GTA 5. I mean, that's... I've broken some cars quite impressively in King of the Hill, but nothing to the extent of this poor, poor car. I mean, it's... The, the, the wheels do not touch the ground properly. The entire chassis is buckled. If that was driven to destruction, that car would not be in a happy place. A wolf howler up next, also on a GTA 5, is heading towards a petrol station. When an AI, minding their own business, driving up, just goes straight into a petrol pump. Blows up not only their car, of course, the player's car, and another car that was in the car park. I mean, it wasn't even like they were freaked out or running away. They just drove straight into a petrol pump. Not not the cleverest piece of AI driving I've ever seen. Up next we've got Invisible AK. Now this was during a stream. This was the mighty God of Figure of Eight Crash Baby map uh, from, well, from a while ago. This one that had the added inclusion of gunners with the booby gun causing, you know, additional chaos. However, well, Chris managed to get stuck without any help from a booby gun. Got the jump a little bit wrong, landed on a roof of a truck, got pulled along slightly and then turned <laughs> into the containers and that's quite well lost in powers. Eventually it does manage to spin its way free, but still no, nicely done. Nice done. Not the only one having issues with uh, with gaps. Mustang Bugatti is testing out the new Tulip, the, the recently released muscle car, and heading up towards a, like a building, a warehousey sort of factory sort of thing. I guess a big wheelie after hitting a fence ends up managing to plonk off a wall to perfectly position it between do two doors. I mean, you couldn't really do that one if you tried. And <laughs> it's just a lot of shuffling. Uh, Zenus on a GT Legends driving a Ford Escort that has a very, very big off at Monza. Tried to take too much speed, did not work, and now we're just going to spin, I would say elegantly, along on the roof. I'm not sure that's the correct term, but an impressive number of spins along on, on the roof of the car. The game does sadly, I guess, sadly reset the vehicle back onto its wheels, but still it's an impressive number of spins, although not to be outdone uh, by uh, Viperfan on GT Sport. Up ahead, that player has all sorts of issues. There's kind of a weird semi-ghost mode going on. Either way, the car we're riding on board with ends up clunking the wall, goes for a spin, gets collected by, I think it was a Corvette, something very fast, hit the back of the spinning dodge. So we just go for many vomit-inducing spins. I mean, the speed at which that uh, <laughs> dodge was going at, I don't know what the G-forces were, but I imagine it was a very, very high number. I imagine it was a very high number indeed. Brazen Miscreant on a set of Corsa Competizioni, uh, driving the almighty wing. Bentley, of course, the GT car, uh, runs across a curb on the inside, and the Bentley's had enough of being a car. It wanted to try and be a plane. It didn't really work as a plane, though. It kind of got, got some lift before crashing into a tyre bundle, bouncing around a little bit, and then deciding it was better off being a car again, and then it's sort of solid on the floor. Black and Red 81 on NASCAR 2003, with an AI having an engine blow up. Not particularly helpful here, no. But the AI makes a right meal of dealing with it. <laughs> gets stuck at the top, just kind of forgets how to steer. I'm not sure if it... I don't know if it broke, so I guess there may be something in the steering got broke as well, but either way, it just goes up to the wall, stops steering, and then runs out of momentum, falls down in front of everybody. Causes a very big crash. It could have actually been a much bigger crash, I have to say. I was half expecting this to be a much nastier crash than it actually was. So yeah, engine let's go, which... It's unfortunate. Uh, AI kind of goes to the top of the circuit and then gives up with any sort of steering input and will eventually run out of speed and the banking does the rest of it, dropping the car down in front of the pack. I think about four or five cars got uh, taken out in this one. But yeah, surprising, surprising number of vehicles managed to get away from uh, from that one without damage. A caisson on Euro Truck Simulator has carried too much speed into a petrol station is now in a little bit of bother, thinking they can navigate around some cones. It turns out cones are stronger than trucks. This is an important life lesson I feel we are learning here. Cones are stronger than trucks. And if your truck happens to get stuck on a cone, you might think, well, let's decouple the trailer. We might get free that way. However, cones dislike this. It is some sort of insult. And they decided to throw the truck and the trailer 
That's some serious power. That is a seriously powerful code. You do not mess with that code. Uh, the trailer did manage to stay upright, at least, and the truck's not completely wrecked. So that's something, at least. Up next, Shelby427 on Wreckfest. Now, we've seen the Carnado, but now we have the Busnado. Yes, it did. <laughs> That's out. The, the pinball mod and circuits, some of the modded circuits do not mix very well because I guess these modded circuits uh, have the grid a little closer together. When you go in buses, well, uh, this. This is the sort of thing that happens. Buses and a slightly iffy stuff, but you just can't get the race to start with this one. There is a... <laughs> <laughs> There's a bus NATO going on in front, and the, well, the player's vehicle stays there briefly. <laughs> Gets annihilated from every which direction. I mean, this time it actually lets it, it allows to go on a little bit longer. There's a bus in the sky. There's a bus going towards the rock. There's another bus uh, somewhere off into the distance. The player's bus is hanging around with all of the buildings here, and it's not a good. In fact, actually, the buses have landed. I've just spotted. I thought the buses kept going, but no, the buses did land and get actually get started at some point. The player's not with them. So the buses, the AI buses can drive around on their own, the player is just going to be stuck over there. And finally, uh, JB007 on uh, Just Cause 4 with a, a, a cow on a plane. Now, we are not sure how the cow ended up on the plane. What we are sure, though, is the cow, as you can see, clearly not tethered to anything. But it is a rare, special stunt cow that is more than happy to sit on the wing of an aircraft. Not quite sure how that's doing that. I'm not not entirely sure how that's going on. What I am sure <laughs> is that it's a mighty impressive cow. It is a mighty... I mean, we've seen goats on the bonnets of cars, and that's one thing. But cows on the wing of a plane is, is quite another. So well done for perhaps the most impressive wildlife stunt uh, we have seen in this series. Now, though, is going to be it for this episode. As ever, if you have clips you'd like to submit to the series, you can via our forums. There will be a link in the description of this video. At the very top of the page is the Fair Race Clips and Mission section, and in there you can find all of the rules and how to submit them. However, that's going to be it from me. Thank you all very much for watching, and until next time, a goodbye.